Hi, I'm Amy from Delicious by Nature. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you how to cook a week's worth of healthy meals in just under two hours, and you get to follow along in semi-real time, bloopers and all. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is preheat our oven to 475. And the second thing we're going to do, the things I like to get out of the way, is um, wash our veggies. So I've set up a bowl of water right here, and all I'm going to do is add a little bit of vinegar to it. White vinegar is fine, I'm using apple cider. And we'll throw any of our need to wash veggies in there. And we can do another set of them in a little bit if they don't fit. I only have, you know, these semi big bowls. All right. So the first thing we're working on is our eggplant. So I'm gonna cut three eggplant to get us started. I want them to be about three quarters inch thick. Now that the eggplant are all cut up, I'm going to line two baking sheets with um, either tin foil or parchment paper, whatever you have, and cover them in olive oil and get them in the oven as soon as it's preheated. And I'm just going to take the olive oil and a brush and brush all the eggplant really evenly with some of the oil. And flip them all over, make sure you do the other side. Salt and pepper. So next we're going to work on something called labna, which is basically a strained yogurt that almost becomes cheese-like and makes a great topping. It's going to go on our eggplant and chickpeas. It could go on top of some curried lamb. can go on top of any grain bowl you have and make it super delicious. But it takes a little while for the whey to strain out of the yogurt and become that thick kind of cheesy consistency. So we're going to get started on that now. So I have my bowl, I have a colander, and then right here I have, um, this is actually a nut milk bag. I recognize that most people probably don't have that sitting around their house. So if you don't, um, a couple layers of cheesecloth is perfect for lining your colander with, otherwise all the yogurt's going to slip through. I am using um, Strauss 100% whole milk yogurt, and the reason for that is it's going to make like a rich, um, cheesy, consistency and you won't get that with something more non-fat but if you insist then do whatever your little heart desires this is all just going in here and basically at this point we're just going to set it aside and let it drain until we're ready to season it with some of our herbs um, towards the end of the cooking session i don't know if you can see that but that's what it's looking like Great, so next up we're going to make sure that we get our sweet potatoes all washed because they're going to go in the oven along with the um, eggplant that we're working on. Sweet potatoes definitely benefit from scrub. I've got this cool little scrub brush, brush at Whole Foods. You can find it on Amazon too just to get all the dirty nooks and crannies. And I actually got a mix of Japanese sweet potatoes. I like to serve those with eggs for breakfast, which is one of the recipes for this week. And then I got a few garnet sweet potatoes because those are going to go into our spicy tuna cakes. So we just need a small tray for these. And again, some parchment paper. Just makes cleanup a lot easier. And uh, if you still have any of the olive oil, you can brush these with that too. It's going to keep the skins nice and um, tender so that if you actually want to eat them when you're enjoying your sweet potatoes. They're a little bit less crispy, crunchy. Otherwise, you can feed those to your dog. And then I'm just going to poke each one with a fork a few times so that they don't explode in the oven. Great, so now while we wait for our oven to preheat and then while we wait for things to bake, we are going to start working on chopping some veggies 
The veggies are, to me, like the cornerstone of having healthy food ready for the week is a big tray of roasted veggies. So I've bought some bell pepper, I've bought some broccoli, I have some cauliflower, and I have an onion that we're gonna chop up for that. We're gonna put it in one big bowl, we'll toss it with seasoning and olive oil, and then we'll wait until everything that's going in the oven right now is done, and throw that in the oven towards the end so that it can get all nice and roasty and we can store it for our meals for the week. All right, so now we're gonna get down to uh, getting our veggies ready for roasting. So the main thing is that we wanna cut them into evenly sized pieces, regardless of what the, that size is. I prefer about a half an inch, um, maybe a little bit less, so that's what I'm gonna be working on right here. And any veggies you haven't washed yet can go in the water to wait for you to be ready to use them. It's about the size pieces that I'm going to be working with for everything that I'm making. oven is ready to go so I'm going to get those things in there so that they can get cooking. They're going to take about 40 minutes so um, we want to make sure we get those cranking so we can work on other things while they work away in the oven. And I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes just to remind me to check on those and probably move things around a little bit. Onion. So this is our bowl of red veggies that's going to be ready to roast once our oven clears up. So I'm just going to set this aside for now and we'll come back to it in a little bit. Alright, the next thing that we're going to get going because it takes a little bit longer to um, work on, even though it's not a lot of actual active work, is to get our chicken into the slow cooker. Um, you could do this in the oven if you wanted to. It would take faster time, but it's also going to space out your prep time longer because you're gonna to need to wait till all of those things that we already have in the oven get out of there and it just kind of like makes for more active time. So I prefer to use the slow cooker for this application. So we're starting with one whole roaster chicken, just a whole chicken. So whole chicken, and I'm just gonna clear out my veggie cutting board because I want it to stay nice and clean without all of the chicken juice. All right, so we have our roasting chicken. A pair of kitchen shears because that's just going to help us open everything up. And then I have some, um, it's called magic mushroom powder that I made uh, based on a recipe that you can find on nomnompaleo.com. Nom Say that five times fast. And we're just going to rub the chicken all over with that and put it in the slow cooker and let it cook up nice and tender. And it's going to be great for putting on salads or putting on green bowls or, um, you know, you can even make stir fries with it. And you can freeze any leftovers, which is just a really awesome way to have healthy food ready to go whenever you want it. slow cooker is totally fine. I'm actually using the slow cook function, not the pressure cook one, and you can do the same at home. So we're just lifting up the lid. I'm going to get our chicken in there. If it's in there nice and steady and if you really wanted, you could line it with some like onions along the bottom if you don't want it to be in its own juices. Because I'm just going to be shredding the chicken afterwards and using it in various dishes, I'm not looking for a super crispy rotisserie style 
skin and frankly the slow cooker isn't the best way to get that but you know if you want to try it out go for it so the lid goes on and i am going to set it for um high for four to five hours it's the afternoon so i have time to spare it's totally fine it's super easy to clean later but i'd rather not have it come out of the oven at 11 p.m. when I'm ready to go to bed. So hence the high setting, you can do it on regular as well. We'll set it for four hours to start. So I'm gonna clean up the chicken a little bit and wipe down the counters, which is what you're gonna see me doing next, and then we'll get back to chopping some veggies. Okay, now that the chicken's all cleaned up, my hands are super washed, we're gonna get back to chopping up some things that aren't going in the roasted veggies. So this is our other veggie chopping session. The reason I like to look at my recipes and consolidate any extra chopping all together is because it makes it nice and easy to have your board set up and then to clean it all away once you're done and really focus on the mixing things together and the cooking and the lamb cooking and all the things that we're gonna be doing next. So that's what you see me doing here. Um, basically, I'm gonna be working on an onion, a jalapeno pepper, some scallions, which I can get in the water to be washing. Um, all of those are going into our spicy tuna cakes, which we'll put together. I'm gonna throw some cilantro into that water to wash it up nice and clean. And I'm also, in a minute, going to throw some mint and cilantro in there. That's going to go into our labna. And um, a shallot is also going to get cut up, and that's going into our dressing. So as you can see, I'm, like, doing several different recipes here at once with the goal of just, like, getting it all out of the way. So the most important thing is to put them in bowls in the right places. that's going to go in with the lamb when we start to cook it all together. So next we're going to work on the um, scallions. So we're going to chop up five of them. Three of them are going into the um, spicy tuna cakes and a couple of them are going, going into our labna. And the part of the green onion you want to use is um, just this kind of like white and light green part down here. And it's super easy if you just hold them all together in one big bunch, cut the ends off, and then slice them nice and thin. So the jalapeno we actually only need half of for the spicy tuna cakes, but I'm just going to chop up the whole thing. And we can decide later if we want it to go in our lab and make kind of like a spicy version. I want a spoon to scoop the seeds out if you don't want it to be too spicy. Since I'm serving this to my young son, I'm going to keep it a little bit on the more mild side than I might normally. Um, so I'm just going to scrape those seeds right out. And we can also chop up some of our cilantro for these spicy tuna cakes. Don't worry too much about the really tender stems in cilantro, especially since this is getting chopped up and going into tuna cakes. It really doesn't matter at all, but I'll try and make it look a little bit pretty. We're just looking for about two tablespoons for the tuna cakes. So my timer's going off, letting me know that it's time to check on those eggplant and sweet potatoes. I'm just gonna take some tongs in case you can't see me um and turn everything over make sure that it's cooking really well and then set the timer for another 20 minutes and while we have the oven open i'm also going to add a little bowl of water in an oven safe dish um, into the oven while we're cooking this it's actually a tip that i forgot that came from yodam and odalanghi who wrote this recipe originally um, and it's going to help steam the eggplant a little bit and keep it from drying out. So I think it'll be totally fine if we just have it in the second half of our cooking session. All right, so I'm going to finish up my chopping with a shallot. Again, this goes into the dressing. Now 
Now, as promised, I'm going to give my cilantro and parsley a quick rinse, or mint and parsley a quick rinse. These are from my garden, so they're already kind of chopped into pieces. And because these both are going into the ladna, there's really like nothing to, too much to be done besides just chopping them. So I think that about does it for our chopping. So I'm going to move all of this out of the way and then I'm going to come back and we're going to get started working on a couple of the other elements of our dishes. So next up I'm going to be working on putting the elements of the tuna cakes together. And um, we don't have the sweet potato ready yet. It's still cooking in the oven. So basically all we're doing is getting some things out of the way. We're mixing it up. It'll be ready to add the sweet potato and some eggs to in a little bit, put in the muffin cups and then stick in the oven, all of which you'll see in action here shortly. So the tuna cakes take about two thirds of our scallions, all of our cilantro, half of our jalapeno, and um, two cans of tuna. I just got the chunk light tuna, no salt added in water because we're going to season it up ourselves. And then in here, I'm going to zest one lemon and season it up with salt and pepper and red pepper flakes if you like it really spicy. So this is our tuna mixture. And like I said, in just a little bit, we're gonna add some cooled sweet potato, one of the ones that we cooked up earlier, um, some egg, and we're gonna put it into muffin cups and put it in the oven. So once we've gotten a quick hand wash, we're going to start working on our oatmeal because we have a little bit of time and it basically just sits in the fridge overnight. There's no cooking needed and it'll be ready to heat up all throughout the week. So it's one and a half cup oats, four tablespoons of chia seeds, going to thicken them up, add some fiber, fiber give you omega-3s, and they uh, work really well in the fridge as well. Four cups of almond milk. This is my uh, favorite brand for right now. A few sprinkles of cinnamon, depending on how much you like it. A quick stir. And this gets covered and goes in the fridge, and it'll be ready for us to eat as soon as tomorrow morning, topped with some nut butter, some bananas, whatever kind of fruit you have on hand. Nice and easy, no cooking required. So next up, we're going to work on our creamy vegan Caesar dressing. This is such an awesome recipe because it works for lots of people. There's no dairy in it. It's super nutritious, all kinds of great elements to it. And it's as simple as throwing everything in a strong blender and whipping it up. It'll keep about five days in the fridge, so I love it too. Again, you'll hear this over and over again. Put it on top of grain bowls, put it on top of a hearty salad along with some of the chicken or chickpeas or even lamb that we're making if you're feeling adventurous. And so we're going to work on that now. So we have cashews, uh, Dijon, miso, tahini, I'm using a chickpea miso, um, capers, these are super important for the flavor of the dressing, and we're going to need a couple tablespoons of lemon juice too, so I'm going to cut one of these open. So two tablespoons of our shallots, two tablespoons of cashews. One tablespoon of tahini, sesame seed paste. One tablespoon of miso. I'm gonna start with juice of half of a lemon. A teaspoon of Dijon. This stuff is the best. A tablespoon of capers with some of their juice. Salt, pepper. And I grab a cup of water to keep nearby because we're going to add it continuously during blending until we get to the consistency that we want for our Caesar dressing. It's looking pretty good and fluid. One thing 
to note is that this dressing does kind of harden up as it sits in the fridge. So you may want to add extra water or just know that you can always stir in some like extra, a touch of warm water later to thin it out if it gets too thick. I think that's pretty good. So this is going to get stored in the fridge for use all throughout the week. So now we can clear this stuff out of the way because we're going to move over to the stove and work on our lamb while we uh, wait for the things in the oven to be ready to come out. And just like that, the timer goes off, so we're going to check it out. So my eggplant's looking pretty good. It's nice and toasty around the edges, but I can feel that it's nice and soft too. It's worth cutting into a, but a piece with a butter knife and taking a bite just to check. Just know that it's really super hot right now. And then we're going to do something similar with the sweet potatoes, just cut into them and uh, make sure that they're nice and tender inside. Yeah, the knife is going like pretty well through. I know that I'm going to heat them up again in the morning before I eat them, so that makes it a little bit more forgiving as well. It's just it's going to depend upon your application. And the smaller sweet potatoes are going to cook through much more quickly. This one feels pretty good. I'm going to set it aside to cool off because it's going to go into our tuna cakes. Um, the rest of these are going to be set aside entirely and then packaged up and put in the fridge for breakfast all throughout the week. So now back to our eggplant. I'm going to pick a big piece because they're the ones most likely not to be cooked through. Pretty tender. Ooh, flying eggplant. Really nice, really tender, well salted. This is going to go great in our dish, so likewise I'm going to set them aside and let them cool off and then we'll put it all together later. Great, so as promised, now we're going to get started on the lamb. Basically all we're doing is we're taking our onions. I bought a pound of, this is 80% lean, 20% fat lamb and some curry powder. This is homemade uh, because I was in a really ambitious streak of making spices a little while ago, but store-bought is great too. Basically all these things are going to go together in my trusty cast iron pan. We're going to cook them up real well and then like everything else we're going to let it cool and we're going to package it up to put in the fridge to eat all throughout the week. Um, while that's happening what I'm going to do is also turn down the heat on my oven in order to make the sweet potato cakes, the tuna cakes, as well as the roasted veggies, we're going to crank it back down to 350 from 475, so it's going to need a little time to cool, so this is a good time to do that. Then we'll get everything ready to go in the oven after that. So I'm just swirling a little bit of olive oil into the pan here. Uh, coconut oil would be really great as well. Uh, go with the curry flavor as well. And you don't need too much of it because the lamb has so much of its own natural fat that you're just really adding to it. And all we're doing is putting it in there so that we can cut, uh, cook our onions up nice and soft. So while the onions are cooking, I'm going to do my best to multitask and not burn the things. So I'm separating everything out. We have our roasted veggies and basically I want to get those onto a tray, toss with some seasoning and olive oil so that it's ready to go as soon as the oven is um, has come down from its high heat a little bit. Parchment paper again. The veggies are going onto the tray. If they won't fit in a single layer, you're going to want to use two trays just so that they have plenty of space to cook and get nice and brown. This look, looks like it's going to be okay, um, but you want to make sure that yours is as well. Then I'm grabbing some more olive oil because I'm just going to pour it gently all over here. If you have to spray olive oil or spray avocado oil or you wanted to like melt some ghee and roast these with that or melt some coconut oil, that's totally up to you. You just want some sort of fat element to help the veggies brown instead of just steaming in the oven. And then you'll see that I'm using some more of my magic mushroom powder. It is really magical. It goes on everything and makes it taste delicious. And we just want like a really neutral seasoning so that we can either put Caesar dressing on it or we can put the labna on it or we could put some salsa on it and it could be all different kinds of things and we don't have to cook any more veggies throughout the week. So we'll set this to the side and I can hear my onions starting to cook so I'm just going to check them out and give them a stir. Looking good. Then I'm also going to cut into my sweet potato and get it into my tuna mixture so that I can start getting my tuna cakes cooking at the same time as well. 
do as I say, not as I do on this one, and make sure that your sweet potatoes are actually cool before you start using them. Otherwise, at, least, at the very least, protect your hand. So mixing this all up. Might even use a masher a little bit to get that sweet potato nice and mashed. And you could also do that separately before you put everything together. Checking the onions. So the onions are starting to cook through. They're starting to get a little bit of that yellow color and kind of get translucent. This is a good time to add the curry powder and the lamb because the lamb is going to take a while to cook together. And this is going to give all of them a really similar great flavor. So for that reason, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of curry powder. Give it a stir really evenly. And then I'm going to just kind of like part the onions and they get, get the lamb into the middle to let it start browning. And then I'll start mixing everything together to cook it really thoroughly. Great, so while that's cooking up, I'm going to stir in my two eggs to hold this all together and then get it into the muffin tin so it can go into the oven. So I'm using these silly silicone muffin tins because it's what I have, but if you have the metal ones, they're even better. You're just going to want to give them a good spray so that they um, stay nice and non-stick. So two eggs. Stirring it in there. And then I have this avocado oil spray. If you have any other sprayer, um, preferably olive oil or avocado oil, or even I've seen coconut oil ones of this, you can use that. You could use the brush we used earlier with olive oil to rub this. You could melt some ghee and you could get the cups with that. Anything to keep your savory muffins from sticking. And now I'm just going to fill them up. And reportioning some things so I can get uh, nine full muffins. They really don't need to be filled all the, t all the way to the top. So the muffins are ready to go in the oven. Our veggies are ready to go in the oven. I'm going to make that happen and I'm going to continue working on the lamb. Before I forget, I'm going to set the timer for another 20 minutes. That's about how long the uh, tuna cakes are going to take. It's definitely going to take longer to roast the veggies, but we're really on the downhill slope to having everything ready to go and packaged in the fridge. And I'm just making sure it's really well stirred, that um, everything is getting broken up nicely, that the meat is starting to brown, and that the onions are cooking with it. I'll give you a quick shot of that. Just like that, and I want it to keep going in that same direction. So what I'm going to do now is start putting everything away. Anything that's cold is going into containers and letting that happen while the meat cooks and while everything is roasting in the oven because there's really not that much else to do. We're just waiting on the labna to be, or the yogurt to be drained enough to stir in all the seasonings for our labna. So I'm actually feeling like our sweet potatoes could use a little bit longer to cook. The good news is that we still have the oven going. So I'm going to throw them in there a little bit longer. This is totally going to be dependent upon the size of the sweet potatoes that you're using. So check them out. If they're still feeling a little bit hard, feel free to continue keeping them in the oven through the other cooking, and they'll for sure be done at the end of all of that. So I'm just going to combine everything that's going to go into my lavna into one bowl, mostly because I'm cleaning up and I want it out of the way. Um, I have some extra shallots. I think it could go in there. If you don't have any, no big deal. If you don't like them, don't put them in. Completely up to you. Um, but this is the mixture that we're going to be stirring into the yogurt to season it up nice and well. The lamb's looking pretty good after 10-ish minutes or so. You just want to keep an eye to make sure that there's no more pink. So I'm going to let it go a little bit longer. This is looking really good. All the meat is looking super brown. I'm going to season it with some salt and pepper and then give it, a, give it a taste and see where we're at with it.
really good. It's going to make a great addition to our dishes all throughout the week. So I'm just breaking up the meat a little bit more, and then I'm going to turn off the heat and let it cool down before we package it up and put it in the fridge. So my timer went off, so I'm going to check on the uh, tuna cups. They are looking nice and done. I can tell just kind of by pressing on the middle. While I'm in here, I'm also going <laughs> to stir the vegetables. I also checked on those sweet potatoes that I stuck back in there, and they Mama. still seem like they're... Mama. <laughs> Nap time's over. I also checked on the sweet potatoes and checked, and they still look a little bit not done. So now that the tuna cakes are out and we don't have to keep it at the 350 temperature, I'm going to crank it to 400 in hopes of cooking those vegetables and the sweet potatoes a little bit faster. While that's happening, I'm cleaning up. I've already cleaned up most everything, and you can probably hear the dishwasher running. Um, so it's almost completely clean. We're, um, we have tons of food ready to go. I'm going to show you all of that package at the end. And I'm still checking on the lavender just to make sure that it hasn't strained too much. We're not there yet. It still needs a little bit more straining time. See you back here in a few. So nap time's over and while the kitchen is mostly clean, we're still waiting on those roasted veggies and a few of the sweet potatoes to cook all the way through. So I have my helper Gavin here um, and he's going to try out some of the sweet potato uh, tuna cakes that we made up earlier and then I'll show you how to get them out of the pan as well if I can get some free hands. You want to try some tuna? What do you say? What do you say? Is it good? Yummy? More? Okay. So we had we made nine with that batch. I'm sort of wishing we had made more since one is already being devoured. Devoured. Um, so take that as a lesson. Maybe you should make a dub double batch if you have someone who's going to really enjoy them as well. So I'm back. I checked the veggies. I can tell that they're almost done. You can see that I've been doing some solid work on getting everything ready. So amidst cleaning up pretty much the entire mess that I made. I've also packaged up the tuna cakes, the sweet potatoes, the ground lamb is back here. Um, I will take a picture of everything. Oops. I will take a picture of everything prepped for you at the end, so you can see what it all looks like. But suffice it to say, for now, um, everything is really laid out. We have a couple of last things to do. So while the roast, the veggies are finishing roasting. I'm checking out the strained yogurt. This could definitely go a while longer and, you know, frankly, we could stick it in the fridge and deal with it when the chicken's done in about two hours. But on the other hand, a lot of the whey has strained. That's the liquid that you see down here. And I'm not too set on it being a like hard cheesy consistency. That would take um, overnight straining. Instead, I'm going to just use it the way that it is now and store our seasonings in. So I'm dumping out the liquid. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to dump the strained yogurt into my bowl here. It's a little bit of a messy process. There's kind of no way about that or no way around that. Just squeeze it all out. And I'm going to give my hands a rinse for obvious reasons. So this is what our yogurt is looking like. You can hear my helper in the background. Uh, playing so I'm, I'm finishing up as quickly as I can and I'm sure you will be too because we all have things to do. I'm stirring in the mixture of scallions and shallots and mint and uh, parsley that you saw me put together earlier and that's just going to make like a really well seasoned yogurt topping since that's what we're going to use it as. It can go on top of the lamb, it can go on top of the eggplant. I think I've already listed all those things for you. Give it a taste. Really nice flavor. Just consider that it is going to increase in intensity as everything sits together over the few days that you're going to have it. So don't feel the need to season it too much. I'm just going to sprinkle a little salt and pepper. Uh, if I wasn't overzealous and had already put my zester into the dishwasher, you could absolutely add some lemon zest in here as well. It's already pretty tangy, but it would just add some nice brightness. Give another stir. And then before I put this in the fridge, I'll get it into a, a better container for that. Let's check our final final for now because we still have the chicken going. It has another couple of hours, but the cool thing is all of this is going to be packaged and done. I will have taken all of the photos and shared it with you in the time that the chicken takes to finish, at which point I'll take some pictures. I'll share it with you, but it's just as easy at home. All you have left to do at the end of that is cleaning your slow cooker, which is not too bad if you ask me. So my veggies are nice getting some nice color. They're nice and roasty. 
I'll let you kind of check that out as much as you can through the seam, but you can see some like nice coloring on them. And like I said, this, these are going to be really versatile. They're going to be able to go into a grain bowl. Um, they could go into a salad with your Caesar dressing and your chicken, all kinds of places. They could be used in like a salsa and guacamole bowl, um, but a great way to have veggies on hand. I'll make a list of all of those things, all those suggestions for you that you can check out on my website, deliciousbynature.com. In the meantime, I'll take some pictures, I'll share that with you, but that's about it for the cooking portion of today. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope that you tried it at home, and I'd love to hear your results if you give it a try. Thanks!